Well, uh, my name's Peter, OK? And I've lived in Brighton for quite some time. And um, I've been in the licensing trade most of my life, actually. And I'm very pleased I'm getting out of it now at the moment. Uh, my name's Bob Coleman. I live uh, just around the corner here, so I come in here quite frequently. I've been coming in here for about the last uh, eight or nine years. Well, I'm Matt. Um, I'm still serving. I've been for seven years. Um, and I'll drink a lot. <laughs> uh, from London, actually, from North London. Came down here in 1945, got married here, and remained down here ever since. Well, I'm actually an unemployed musician. My name is Fred Zappa, a brother of Frank. Um, I have a nice flat with five rooms and a little terrace, and. Uh, I suppose I'm more or less retired. I'm, I'm receiving a pension anyway. I celebrated my 65th birthday last October. My name is Brian Allen. I'm 49. Hopefully 50 this year. <laughs> uh, I come from County Durham. Been in Brighton a year gone February the 11th. Quite a nice town. Not a lot of uh, employment, mind you, but there you go. I used to work down the mines until they shut down. Uh, I've been a librarian. I was a librarian for 25 years in Jerusalem, London, and in New York with Time magazine. Well, I'm Steve Jackson. I work for the post office. I have done for the past four years. Married, one child, training alcoholic. My name's Linda. I'm from Liverpool. I've come from Liverpool, but I moved down to Brighton 10 years ago. I work in Gatwick Airport. As a ground to assess, we do check in and um, board the flights. Then I came home about 20 years ago from America, from Manhattan. I was also acting and uh, writing a few plays, none of which made any money for me, mm -hmm. and uh, although they're quite good. Now, my name is Mr. Walters, and I live just across the road from Miss Off License, and um, I've been here about 12 years. I play the piano a lot, not as well as I should, but uh, I, I try and practice as much as I can. Um, Three, three years? Five years. I suppose it's got to be five years. Mm. Five years. Oh, well, I don't know. Five, six years. Got to be that. Oh, uh, six, seven years? Well, about eight, nine years, I think. Um, well, as long as I've been here. Basically, I, I used to shop to get myself a wine for dinner. Uh, a rosé, if you've got it. But today, as well as having a wake, I thought I would go for a whiskey, but you haven't got it. I mean, a vodka, but you don't have it. Now, what are we going to do about this? I've had a bottle of brandy some gave me at Christmas. I've had one drink out of it, that's it. Unfortunately, my father died when I was only a couple of months old, two or three months old, anyway. So times were hard when my mother used to go and scrub out hospital wards. And I'm talking about scrubbing out in those days, not like it is at present moment. And things were hard. But there was some form of enjoyment in it at the same time. When I first started working, I mean, you could afford to go out every night of the week if you wanted to. I don't know anybody who can do that nowadays. I don't know anybody at all. Unless they're, uh, you know raking it in, so to speak, unless they're Tory. I have Irish friends who feed whiskey to their babies, you know, it's just to make them sleep. It doesn't seem to do them any harm. They grow up into footballers and <laughs> another so. I think this part of the world is much better than up north. They're more, they're more intellectual, I would say, down here. 
Now, I feel it's cheaper in here than it is there. If I go there and get a litre and a half, OK, I've noticed the other day um, it was 4 99 for a litre and a half a litre from Ulsh, but I think, no, I don't like the litre from Ulsh, so I'll come here for the Bulgarian. If you haven't got the Bulgarian, I'll still stay in and get the litre from Ulsh rather than go down the road. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a bit of a chequered history because um, before the pub, actually, I ran a... Um, this was before after this, uh, the nightclub. We had run a snooker club and we used to have a bit of a ball there. And unfortunately we fell a bit foul, foul of the law. And I lost my license. Because I happened to be selling two halves of beer in the, uh, about 20 minutes in the afternoon session. I did have a drink this morning because we're celebrating Huey's death. Well, not celebrating it, but we're having a wake. He died an old geezer, very old. He was due to go a few years back, but anyway, this is it. Um, normally, of course, I'd be totally comprehensive at this time. three times a week, I suppose. Oh, at least once a week. Me? I'm the most regular customer here. God, about every day. Um, as much as possible. Um, I use this shop quite a bit, because if you drink wine a lot, like, you know, I do, you're looking at sort of good, sort of re good quality wines at a sort of reasonable price. I know a lot of people in this area, but a lot of them seem to be going, dying off. There's about 30 odd people have passed away within this last six months. One's died, none got run over. Unfortunately, that's another very good re reason why I'm quite pleased at the moment. I'm a bit out of the trade because. In the train, you do drink much, much too much. I mean, I just sort of, uh, something you don't like to admit, but when you're out of it, you sit down, you think this, uh, about the amount you probably did drink. And just without, without even seemingly to drink, it's a tremendous amount of alcohol you put away, tremendous. In fact, I was, I was talking to a lady today, she just lost her husband and she burst out crying. And she only lives around the corner. She's another one I won't be seeing much of. A strong red wine, yeah, sitting with, sort of, at home, more with some friends, sort of playing cards or whatever. Go for a couple of bottles of red wine, no problem. In fact, um, I used to go into that museum. Do you know the museum? I do. I used to spend a lot of time in the pub. Yeah. Um, they had a nasty raid there once. Three men burgled it. And uh, he attacked the... Uh, what do they call them? The rector? The curator. And they stole all the lovely stuff that was in the back. A log of man, not a log of lout, yeah. <laughs> but it was a nasty business because you, know, you couldn't defend, they were old, you know. And it was a nice little number for them. I am a fairly heavy drinker, not an alcoholic, but I, I enjoy my whiskey and uh, my gin. <laughs> my drinking uh, is very small. In fact, I haven't had a drink for three weeks. I'm not a uh, habitual drinker. about mid-morning. Just about now. What time of day is it? It's about 2.30, yeah. Sometimes in the morning to see the young lady, you know, sometimes during the afternoon and also during the evening. Evenings. About eight, half eight in the evening. Normally on the evening, but... All times. Isn't that true?
I don't particularly want to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning to have a drink because I'm usually in bed by that time, but I want to be able to if I want to. I think this business of the last call, gentlemen, you know, time, gentlemen, please, although it made a nice refrain for T.S. Eliot in his poem, uh, The Wasteland, it's, uh, it's pretty absurd. I suppose if you're going to drive, then obviously you shouldn't drink, but then... Let's face it, most people do, don't they? Well, I mean, you take in Scotland when they change the laws up there. Alcohol hasn't actually went down. Not what was people expected. It actually went down because they could get it when they wanted. They weren't restricted to any particular time, you see. I've been a very lucky person in my life because I've been in uh, the licence trade all my life. And I do drink. And at the time of when I go home, I often drive home as well and I've been breathalyzed on numerous occasions and never I've never been summoned yet if you know the right places to go you can legally drink 24 hours a day anyway in fact once I was arrested almost beaten up I couldn't believe it put into a cell and when my blood count was taken and I had it done myself I was um, point naught point naught naught three or something which meant I had no alcohol in me t at all well it's all very nice. Open all day, but how many pubs are open all day? Funny thing is, if they caught me on another night, they might have been lucky. <laughs> Licensed laws, well, I don't think they could make a vast difference here, personally. But when you've had a few drinks, I think you're actually driving better. Because you, you, you are really... Not, uh, hang on, I've had a few drinks. I'm really conscious of what I'm doing. I'm looking around at everything. So, um... Accidents are going to happen anyway. Accidents are going to happen, unfortunately, sometimes it happens when somebody's drunk, sometimes it happens, accidents are happening all the time when people haven't had a drink in them. If I was going to go in really seriously, I'd buy teachers' whiskey. Uh, mainly cigarettes. Uh, I usually purchase a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of gin. Usually a rosé for dinner, you know, to have on the side. Uh, if we have a party or something, I'll probably get a scotch and brandy. <laughs> Apart from that, it's just bitter. It's the Bulgarian country wine. And do you know, Lambeth. Just a cheap cigarette. And they suit my purpose anyway, which is the most important thing. And I find that if you change from one brand to another, this is when one starts getting coughs and what have you. With these, I don't, so I stick to them permanent, in other words. And that's how my bite's been, and it's different. I haven't seen a decent bit in years. That's that sort of Tetris used to be a favourite, but uh, you don't see it right out nowadays, and it's not down here, don't you? Yeah. I don't like bitter beer. I find bitter beer, English beer, is really the dregs. <laughs> yeah. I could use the word. Yeah, I think it's terrible stuff for the most part. Especially the real ale and all these things, you know, the people that pride themselves on real ale and that kind of stuff. I think it's pathetic myself. <laughs> if you can't work, you can't earn enough to exist. So you live on baked beans and potatoes all the time. I suppose theoretically, booze, although we think it's very expensive, is in actual fact quite cheap. I mean, how can an unemployed person afford to buy, you know, de buy decent grub? He's got to go for the cheapest the year's knocking about. I mean, I've actually lost two stone in weight in the last year. Now, you go around the shops here now, there's a, it's incredible the amount of fruit that's coming in from all over the world and the variety of meats and the variety of packaged foods and this kind of thing, some of which are very good. There's one good thing, the council's paying me rent, which is fair dues like, and, but they'll only pay for a certain amount of time anyway. And once again, I'm, then I'm going to have to fork it out my uh, down money. And how I'm going to do that, I don't know. If you're talking about 79 quid, my rent's 68 a week. You know, because we've got a bad reputation being the DSS, um, somebody's got to do the job. Um, I suppose the, the unemployed could think about it, that if we weren't there, they wouldn't get anything at all. When was the last time I went out for a, a cinema and a meal? Can't afford it for years. No, they rarely conned us, Tories. They rarely blew it for us. If you've got someone like a drunk or a drunkie or something like that, don't aggravate them. Um, try and keep calm, don't shout at them. And hope they'll calm down and go away. <laughs> Thank you.
Horrendous, totally. I mean, I've got one full-time job that I work 50 hours a week. I travel for about 10 of them up to Gatwick a week, so that's 60 hours taken up. I've got a part-time job as well. I've got a student as well at the house. I've got my boyfriend who gives me rent money because I own my own place, and I'm still about £300 a month short. My outgoings are £1,400 a month. Now, for example, I got my water rate bill come in this week, or last week now, I beg your pardon, sorry. And when I looked at it, I thought this is unusual. It's lower than last year. Very unusual. Couldn't see the point. So I instantly found it out. I went back to my stubs of my previous payments from my checkbook and found that I was right. But I find, like, I say to my boyfriend, I still want to have a glass of wine. If I want to have a glass of wine, I can't afford to go out. And I want to have a bottle of wine and I make sure it comes here before half past ten because I just don't like bossing myself at all. But lo and behold, what happens? Last year they give you eight monthly payments at X figure. This year, coming from April, it's ten monthly payments at a slightly lower rate. But when one out of two totals up, it's higher again, naturally. To run my car, a gallon of petrol cost me £2.60, something like that. Now, a gallon of beer costs you £12. But you don't go out to the North Sea to drill for beer. No, but then uh, I suppose you've got to ask yourself whether a pint of lager is justified at two pounds, you know, but the only thing is, have you ever tried drinking ten pints of orange juice? <laughs> you know, I suppose in a way, um, ten pints of beer or ten pints of lager, you can drink. Um, ten pints of orange juice would be terrible if you make it very ill. And you can get further on a gallon of petrol than you can a gallon of beer. A gallon of beer, you get about 30 yards, I think. You may be the, just the person picking up the phone. Uh, nothing to do with you, but the person who takes it, this isn't there. You get a load of abuse. You can only say, if something's gone wrong, apologise and say, I'll try and get it sorted out. We've got nothing going in this country. Look how many are unemployed every day. You mean to tell me that this is going to stop just like that? And half the time, there's n it's not a, a fault of the workers there. It might be the law saying you've got too much money coming in, so you can't get any support, that sort of thing. The South used to be always pretty well off. But now it's turned the other way around. Now it's all the industry's going up north now. That's where I'm thinking about moving back to. Well, I might as well. Well, I couldn't go through an evening without, you know, sort of having what I call quite an excessive amount of drinks, you know. Well, we've got a certain gentleman who used to be in the film business. His name is... is uh, he's, he's got the great idea of spending all this winner, his name is winner. I think if you lose it all of the money. Because in actual fact, in anything, I think drink is probably reasonably good for you. Not, not if you are taking it like a, you know, like a drug. He's got good ideas, but he loses a lot of money because he goes into the wrong subject, you know. He's make, making films about, which don't appeal to the ordinary man in the street. And I mean, even you come down to cigarettes. I mean, they've got terrible, uh, um, they've had a terrible right up, haven't they, cigarettes? Um, here again, I'm a great believer of a little bit of what you like, doesn't do you any harm, probably does you quite a lot of good. I think that's a good time to stop it. <laughs>